Hello and welcome to etcio.com. My name is Amol Dete. While working from home, we all understand the life is virtual and there are pros and cons of it. But one important thing that we have learned in last five to six months is working virtual it can be also done. Work from home can also be done. But there are many challenges that the enterprises, business and specifically the BFSI companies are facing because every employee and most of the important people are working from home. The challenge is related to data center, the challenge is related to security, because the challenge is everybody has to access data instantly and everybody wants to give the result seamlessly and smoothly. And that is why it is most important for BFSI companies and also all the businesses to have a seamless cloud strategy. That is why etcio.com has crafted a meaningful session today, specifically on the cloud. And the topic of today's session is maximizing multi-cloud for driving business growth. So welcome each one of you to this particular discussion. And I would like to tell you that I have four very important speakers who are going to give a remarkable perspective on this particular topic. My first speaker for today's panel is Mr. Shukumar Basin, the Chief Technology and Operations Officer, National Stock Exchange. Mr. Basin, welcome on the show. My next speaker is Yes, Ganeshan, the CTO of ICICI Prudential Life Insurance Company. Ganeshan, welcome on the show. Thanks, Ramon. Thanks for having me. My next speaker is Venkateshwaran, Chief uh, Technology Officer at FIS. Venkateshwaran, welcome on, on the show. And my last speaker is Ritesh Gupta, the Regional Director at Nutanix. Ritesh, welcome on the show. Thank you, Amol. Thank you. To begin with, gentlemen, I have a very, very important question. And I will take this question with, uh, you know, Shukumar Bhaseen, S. Ganeshan and Venkateshwaran A. But to start with, you know, this particular question, I will ask to Mr. Bhaseen, since he comes from a banking background, now heading the National Stock Exchange in terms of CTO and operations head. Mr. Bhaseen, you know, in today's environment, when the journey towards digital transformation, you know, starts with actually modernizing the data centers, you know, how are you addressing and transforming the strategy for modern data center at NSE? Actually, in terms of uh, data center uh, uh, modernization, um, we are uh, looking at uh, you know a couple of steps. That uh, one, uh, we are looking at uh, you know consolidating the multiple data centers, which is uh, you know taking uh, very uh, you know many small small data centers. We are consolidating them into a single, uh, you know, as a national level uh, data center and the DR location rather than having multiple very large data centers. So we are going coming up with a three data center strategy on, uh, you know, the production, PCP location and the near DR. So okay. that is one uh, we have done in terms of uh, the locational strategy. And uh, second major, uh, uh, you know, technological uh, decision we have taken that we are going to go with a software defined data centers. So yes. we have already in our DR uh, location, we have implemented software defined network uh, within the data center as the same thing uh, this year we are doing in our production and near DR. And uh, the third major uh, area is uh, being a exchange uh, we have, uh, you know, very latency sensitive business. So apart from our core uh, business, which is the trading, so all the post trade and auxiliary and uh, surround applications, uh, they all we are hosting uh, most of them on the private cloud, on premise private cloud. And among these applications, uh, you know, we are looking at, uh, you know, uh, the applications which are from non-core uh, domain, uh, which are uh, like HR, finance, uh, whether they could be, uh, or training, they could be put on the public cloud. So that is the broad uh, strategy for data center area we are working. We'll take the same question with you, Ganeshan. How are you looking at, you know, the data center modernization right now? So I think uh, I will take it in a broader uh, way. Um, yes. What we are observing, Amol, here is, uh, like the best of thing comes from uh, different uh, providers. For example, uh, uh, Amazon will have its own native components. Uh, the other uh, Google may have its own uh, best of the components. So, so I think if you look at something like a best of breed approach, uh, we realize that uh, uh, we may have to uh, keep availing the services from uh, different uh, 
cloud providers or different uh, partners we are also real, realizing that uh, uh, the ecosystems that uh, that is being uh, that's coming up from uh, various partners are, are all in different uh, i think setups and all so if as a, as an organization if you have to re, if you have to leverage the best of the things available from various service providers from various partners uh, we would need to have a kind of uh, strategy where we can uh, do a kind of for example if uh, we may have a like you now we, we have a well established data center and also we have mm-hmm. we have done the complete the virtual uh, vpc kind of setup however we may need to leverage okay. from various partners so i think what we are looking at here is we need to have a best of breed approach we need to have a multi cloud strategy mm-hmm. and uh, and in addition to that nowadays uh, the technology is available in such a way that you can extend the uh, uh you can the extensible also is possible for example i can have the data center i can have uh, the the cloud ser- uh, services and cloud resources added on top of my uh, like whatever resources i have at data center so that's what we are looking at we are looking at in such a way that we would be in a position to seamlessly interface with the, with, uh, with the various ecosystems available and we we would be in a position to uh, like easily plug and play kind of model of the resources available across the cloud that's that's how we are looking at it now right uh, ganesh and venkateshwaran what is your view how are you looking at modernization of data centers what is your strategy so for me uh, in my organization modernization starts with uh, data center consolidation first we had uh, uh, quite a lot of data centers globally so we completed the data center consolidation brought uh, uh, only few service providers into play uh, right. so that was a step one a data center consolidation and now we are working on reducing the server footprint uh, so too many uh, servers uh, uh, so we are now focusing on reducing the server footprint so what we uh, derive uh, out of all this is uh, three things basically cost effectiveness agile operation that aligns to the business growth uh, the business growth uh, uh, unless we are agile it's not uh, going to help them uh, and the third one is the scalability right so all this three is the primary driver for uh, our modernization projects uh, as uh, uh, bashin sir said today it's everything is software defined right so software defined network software defined van Uh, now software defined data center right so we are looking at that uh, uh, so far as uh, uh, what the digitization is uh, like uh, uh, he, he mentioned about the dc dr and the ndr right so it would not be uh, like a switch over from dc to dr anymore uh, to, what i mean is uh, the entire payload the entire payload uh, is going to move seamlessly from uh, a data center to a, a dr site not only in the region it can move from india to us to singapore uh, to that extent today uh, the technology supports uh, it's we no more do a, a failover application by application and uh, which we traditionally do the entire payload the entire bank moves in one shot so that's what we are trying to do uh, on when we talk of uh, digitization and modernization in data centers uh, what comes to mind is on demand provisioning right everything everything uh, you don't pre provision stuff and only on demand and paper use model uh, stuff like that is what uh, comes in mind so that's one on demand provisioning is going to be one of the key driver for us so we are driving uh, this initiative as uh, modernization of data center in our organization okay uh, thanks uh, venkateshwaran for that note in fact uh, uh, three four very valid points mr basin spoke about you know software defined data centers consolidation of data centers you know ganeshan spoke about various resources of uh, you know data centers using them and marketer also added three four very important points to it so you know these points ritesh i will come to you you we heard you know what the bfsi players are talking about and we have seen a lot of optics specifically into cloud adoption from the bfsi company you know considering this my you know question to you is what are the bottlenecks that you see that the bfsi companies are facing in terms of adopting cloud and also if you could share some blind spots that you see there Uh, from the bottleneck perspective uh, what i feel uh, amol and uh, friends here is uh, first on the application i mean a lot of customers are running traditional applications which are meant for the on prem uh, infrastructure or the on prem cloud right so, so those applications have to be rewritten you know like we have certain companies who are still going in the age old applications like cobol so they have to transform into the new age uh, application so for example a old legacy built application has to be transformed to a kind of a microservices based architecture so once the application transformation is done 
then only you know you can actually get the benefits of a public cloud which which actually gives a multi cloud kind of a approach to the organization the second important uh, perspective what i feel and as uh, basin sir also rightly said that you have a tier 1 application sitting on prem and the tertiary applications sitting on public cloud so the very important aspect i believe is that total cost of ownership which has to be done uh, proactively and once the tso is done properly then you know you get to know uh, whether your applications uh, sitting on prem do make sense or you have to uh, put it on the public cloud i so, so these are the two bottlenecks personally i feel right obviously every customer needs to you know uh, has to overcome them. right rishesh and i now you know there are some important questions that i will ask you know each one of you one by one and i will start with you mr basin considering the current environment where everybody is working from home and you know that phenomena actually impacted everyone of us so you know what are some of the key initiatives that you have taken you know or you have adopted to ensure that your business will not be impacted because you are you know catering to a customers or specifically investors who wants to take decisions in microseconds they want everything at microseconds and everything should be available there so how you know would you like to you know share your views here as i said uh, before that uh, uh, you know the core business uh, in our case uh, you know we have to go with the uh, on prem uh and uh, uh, which is the latency sensitive business of the trading and uh, you know or the core clearing and settlement which could be on a uh, you know very responsive uh, like a public cloud kind of experience of a on prem uh, private cloud but however the question okay. you are asking is really that uh, these all things are good but uh, how uh, things uh, you know will work if now since our past uh, uh, you know 4 5 months we have been working largely uh, you know remotely and uh, uh, i will be uh, very proud to say that uh, you know in couple of days uh, we have run the largest derivative exchange uh, totally remote uh, from remote no uh, body from uh, on prem uh, was supporting the exchange uh, there was some people kept stand by if remote doesn't work so do we but we have set up the record that the whole exchange uh, ran totally remotely so uh, we have set up the uh, you know uh, remote uh, uh, working environment based on a uh, one particular cloud service provider they uh, provide the uh, you know remote desktop uh, services uh, on cloud so that we have enabled for all right. our 100% staff that is a as you we are talking about multi cloud so it is a cloud based environment mm-hmm. then the uh, second uh, area we had also virtual uh, desktop uh, so vdi so that we have also set up on a hybrid cloud so uh, you know we mm-hmm. and we have a dedicated vdi uh, environment for on prem running on a private cloud uh, apart from that mm-hmm. we had created a hybrid Uh, on a hybrid cloud which is a, a aws and uh, you know uh, uh, i will take just name but names are just examples only so uh, it is a uh, uh, vnc uh, hybrid cloud and uh, then as i was talking about the various uh, uh, other support applications which are uh, you know really it for it uh, like itsm applications uh, or asset management applications or finance applications uh, or the hr applications uh, or legal departments applications so all of them uh, are hosted on a different uh, public clouds uh, right. and similarly customer service support all of them are again made available working from remote uh, based on a cloud based uh, uh, you know security which has a multi tier of uh, you know authentication putting in place uh, depending on the uh and this multi tier of authentication is uh coming uh from a cloud again so which senses that was based on the risk uh it uh, uh, you know hardens the authentication levels uh some people uh, can uh, get into the uh, you know environment just with a uh, login id password and some people have to get into login id password and uh, you know the two factor authentication uh, using uh be it is a otp or be it is a uh, you know uh, a, a local uh, software based token or a, a biometric 
again based on the uh, kind of a seriousness of the uh, process and location various risk factors taken right. into account so this uh, uh, you know has been a uh, cloud based environments and uh, they have uh, that's where it, which is a live example that uh, we have been using multi cloud for uh, uh, you know ensuring uh, the remote uh, services are made available to all our uh, employees and the on prem uh, uh, services uh, which is a trading and clearing for the trading members and clearing members uh, in this country are made available interruption free so the, the you can see the entire it for it uh, is running on multi cloud in our environment today very interesting uh, mr basin in fact uh, now people are talking about hybrid cloud public cloud private cloud you know on a softer note one of the cto recently told me that you know we have to go on cloud because any which way the building physical data center is very expensive because real estate values are you know not in, yeah. not appropriate so we should go and make some place on cloud so yes yeah, apart, you know apart from uh, money that's is a very total valid cost point of, that we take note yeah apart from money yeah. is a total cost of ownership and time to market so that is very important actually time to market uh, uh, you know really helps in specifically in the current situations uh, you know where uh, you don't want you know people to get into your data center uh, and because a physical uh, entry to your premise is prohibited and you want Absolutely. to minimize that as well uh, as much as possible you don't want that somebody to get infected and you get for 14 days quarantine for the whole building or something like that actually so that yeah. is a you know or a light up note that is another major case to go for the cloud based uh, you know so total services like that no i think there is so much you know talk about the cloud perhaps the companies will now have another designation called chief cloud officer along with chief cto cio and you know other cxos uh well uh, thanks for that note uh, mr basin ganeshan uh, you know i will take the same conversation ahead and if you could you know tell me more about you know how covid has impacted your it strategy in terms of budgets and what are some of the key priorities and initiatives for you know you to think about next 6 months or 12 months the applications or the functionalities that we have rolled out for sales team uh, which was anyway internet based uh, applications however uh, the back end functionality the operation services was uh, though it were though they were digitized they were not kind of uh, uh, set up for uh, people who can work from home and all so i think irrespective of whatever the gcp plan whatever we have done i don't think anybody has any solved uh, a situation like this happening at all our initial priority was to have uh, these applications available on a virtual private network kind of model so the team uh, started uh, so we could uh, roll out successfully uh, within a week or so uh, and our risk team was was, was uh, able to identify this particular risk and we were able to quickly do this in the month of march itself uh, so once we have established uh, the the accessibility part and uh, people able to function uh, from from home uh, we actually started focusing on the experience part which is nothing but you know some of the with the kind of low connectivity low bandwidth Uh, how do we uh, give the same kind of experience to the to the functionality to the to the fun- business functions and all so i think we we started investing heavily on the uh, vda kind of vda kind of thing because i don't think it was necessary at all earlier so that's that's one of the investment uh, we are doing heavily uh, and uh, and now the, what we are also looking at here is uh, uh, though we thought it would be like kind of a month phenomena or a couple of weeks phenomena it's extending beyond uh, anybody can think of so we are now looking at uh, and and really inst- uh, investing on the collaboration platform so what we what we practically right. say that here is uh, uh, in our uh, uh, industry I, there are, there are uh, thousands of people have to interface with the customer uh, and talk about the product features uh, and then uh, and then only the sale happens so in in a situation like where you cannot go and meet the customers how do i give a kind of collaboration platform to the to the to the sales team to the services team and to, to everybody so that they can uh, uh, they can uh, seamlessly bring the uh, stakeholders uh, into a kind of platform and at the same time they can uh, showcase whatever they want to showcase kind of thing so i think uh, we are investing heavily on the uh, collaboration platform we are investing on the vda kind of infrastructure and now we are also looking at uh, 
uh, so we had a plan of uh, moving uh, a, part, a part of the thing to like whatever open architecture to the cloud in a period of two or three years kind of thing. Now that we are expediting that uh, to happen in the next one year or so. That, that's, uh, that's how the, in, in terms of budget, uh, we are uh, we are spending more on the infrastructure area as of now. Thanks, Kanishan, for that note. Venkatesh and I will also take the same question with on the IT and the budget because every BFSI company is, you know, revamping uh, their budgets and the strategies. And you are dealing with a lot of players in different formats of BFSI, whether it's payment companies, you know, merchants and, you know, capital. So how are you aligning your strategy in terms of next six to 12 months? in terms of budget as any other company we had a fun filled uh, yearly workshop in the month of january fixing 2020 yeah. strategies right <laughs> which lasted for only q1 <laughs> so okay. from q2 we have to again relook at the entire strategy uh, with the current uh, pandemic situation uh, so i uh, guess uh, we did have to uh, reverse a lot of uh, strategies which we planned uh, in the beginning of the year to fit the uh, current scenarios uh, so the rest of the year strategy is all redefined now. So budget perspective, yes, the business has uh, uh, dropped and uh, we have to have uh, very thin budgets to operate. So which drive all the innovations like uh, automate IT, uh, modernize IT, uh, innovate IT. So all this uh, has to take the priorities uh, to do more with less. Right. Uh, so I, I'm sure every industry uh, today is uh, having this challenge of uh, do more with less. Right. Uh, but that opens up a lot of innovativeness. Yes, we are able to come up uh, and break the myths we had, right? Right from uh, even now working from home, uh, we never thought certain things are possible working from home. Like say, uh, people managing the data, the security layer, there are functions which we always mm -hmm. believed that this is a desktop function. It cannot uh, work from even a laptop, right? Which is now working from home. Uh, so we broken all that uh, beliefs we had today. So if we relook and see if this function can work permanently work from home, many of them are, yes. Maybe we may slowly start thinking if an office is required, like what you said, right? We may have only virtual offices eventually. Right? That, that may be the future. Uh, so with that, uh, we have redefined our budgets. Uh, so we are more focusing on engaging our clients and partners, uh, staying with them to understand their problems uh, more and trying to give solutions uh, around uh, um, um, digitization and modernization for them. Uh, so time to market for them is very critical, like be it a life insurance policy. So, so sorry to cut you, Venkatesh Sharan. Can you by any chance, you know, because I'm more interested in that and that is where, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, uh, great thoughts come. By any chance, do you want to share some of your experiences? What are the challenges companies are facing? What are the feedbacks that you are getting? So that's uh, time to market. I was just coming to that time to market, right? The yes. banks want uh, to reach out to the customers uh, uh, very fast. It could be opening a simple uh, savings account in less than uh, two minutes time, right? So uh, that's where uh, today uh, they are heading to. So for that, uh, the modernization helps a lot. Uh, so we have to ensure that uh, these are all happening with the cloud strategy. Hence our 2020 strategy is more focused towards uh, uh, the cloud, uh, making things light and simpler, uh, uh, increasing productivity of my uh, employees so that uh, uh, they help in turn the clients uh, time to market very less. Right? So that is going to be my strategy uh, around 2021. Very interesting. And in fact, there are many reports also talk that in 2021, you know, cloud data centers will process as much as 94% of the workloads. There are some reports which says by 2021, 75% of mid-size and large organizations will have adopted multi-cloud or hybrid strategies. So, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, journey has started towards that. Ritesh, I already asked you about the bottlenecks, but, you know, I'm going to take forward the same question because considering, you know, uh, the adoption is high in the industry. You know, there are three, four challenges that the companies are talking about. One is specifically about the governance control. Second is managing multiple clouds, uh, monitoring the performance of the cloud, lack of resources. How do you think, you know, the companies can handle this kind of challenges? Before coming to the challenges, I just want to make right. one point on uh, what uh, Mr. Venkat said about this virtual office. Sure. So, I mean, this is a very important point he said because uh, we have few customers. Uh, and this is the first time a, a different use case on a VDI has come, like Mr. Basin also uh, said about the VDI. We are pitching a VDI solution hmm. where the customer is comparing a total cost of ownership against a physical office. So, okay. has learned that post-COVID, like a lot of you know uh, folks like us can work from home. 
what is the requirement of a physical office? So the customer right. is actually getting go of multiple such offices across Mumbai, Chennai, and yeah. Bangalore, and is comparing with a VDI kind of an option. And believe me, that VDI is giving a better total cost of ownership com compared to the the administrative expenses of having a physical office in place in these three metros. Coming to challenges, uh, Amol, what you said again, you know, when I speak to a lot of CIOs, specifically in BFSI, what they say pre-COVID, you know, they had a kind of a long-term plan. They had a one-year or a two-year roadmap for the IT. Now that can uh, be application-centric or infra uh, the infra-centric. But with post-COVID or with COVID, uh, during COVID, what they have realized that I think, you know, that long-term plans have to be put on hold. So it is completely a revisiting of their strategy. So like one of the big okay. CIO told me that, you know, we'll put a hold on the long-term strategy or a long-term plan. I mean, this COVID is actually a blessing in disguise because what is helping, the COVID is helping the customer is revisit the existing architecture. The, the existing architecture, which is the core, you know, the core application for, for that bank. So obviously, this is one of the challenges, I believe the most important challenge is what you are doing, you know, currently, is it in the right way? Is it implemented in the right way? Is it serving your end consumer or your customer? Hmm. In the way that, that the, uh, you know, the, the turnaround time for the customer is, is minimal or not. So that is one. Hmm. The second part to it is, you know, with the advent of public clouds, as, as I mentioned earlier, hmm. the, uh, the public clouds, lot of places the application has to be rewritten or recoded so right. the important part is your application cloud native like I have an example like you know soon in next two to three weeks or every month once Amazon has a super sale offer now during the super sale, obviously you know a lot of customers may be running certain applications on prem but due to the dynamic oh. nature of the workload they may want to you know uh, get your workload or application live and running from the public cloud. In that case, is that application a cloud native application? Can, can it be, you know, uh, immediately brought up from the public cloud? And then the very important part, can you manage the application from a single console? Right. So the operations piece in the hmm. new dynamic world where the, the stuff, the things are changing quite re frequently. Every three months you see something new. So the manageability, the the responsiveness are the two other challenges which which I feel you know the customer should should definitely think about. Okay, uh, very well said, uh, Ritesh. Mr. Basin, I will come to you. Yes, uh, you know Ritesh mentioned about the challenges, and we all are talking uh, you know the great things about the cloud adoption. But you know there are when it comes to compliance, when it comes to regulations, there are still ambiguities. There are still you know uncertainty about you know what it should be done. RBI has its own rules and, you know, regulator has its own rules and people are not very sure about the public cloud. Considering all this background, because we do not know what rules will regulators frame going ahead, uh, is it tricky for you, you know, to choose, okay, I will shift entire data center to cloud in this particular format or something like that, because ultimately you're serving in a financial industry. Uh, very important question, actually, uh, that uh, being a now, uh, you know, financial services industry, uh, we cannot uh, really, uh, you know, core loads, uh, uh, not just because of the latency sensitive needs, because so far none of the cloud service providers uh, in the public cloud uh, space uh, are providing the latency sensitive services. And uh, the, uh, the second major uh, area is that the regulatory requirement, the residency of all the uh, customer data and the critical uh, financial data must be within the Indian geography. So we have to be all the time uh, compliant with that. So, uh, and that is what actually uh, we are ensuring, even if uh, we are going for uh, any of the support applications or less critical applications uh, being put on the public cloud or hybrid cloud, uh, the data residency must be uh, within the Indian geography. That means that all the availability zones uh, of that data center must be in India and all the data which is uh, stored in these data centers, it must be all the time 
hundred percent encrypted. And some of the uh, these data centers we are using, uh, you know, BYOK like bring your own key as well, uh, which is uh, and some places uh, we have got uh, uh, another model as well where the encryption infrastructure uh, is uh, on premise. So when the data is uh, being sent out to the cloud, it is already traveling from the on premise to the cloud as a encrypted data. So it is all the time fully encrypted. And apart from that, the data, uh, you know, on transmission, any interactive data, which is, uh, you know, that also always 100% encrypted. So TLS layer, uh, you know, transport level encryption is always with using the latest uh, TLS 1.3 standards uh, is being, uh, you know, done. As well Correct. as, uh, you know, there is a, a big uh, challenge is there, uh, which is a cloud law which I think, uh, you know, uh, any discussion uh, on going for the uh, public cloud uh, uses is incomplete without a discussing cloud law. Cloud is an acronym. Uh, if many years back, uh, uh, it used to be the Patriot law. And I'm talking about it is a US Patriot law and which has got converted, I think, in later in 2016 or 17 timeframe as a cloud law. So that has a uh, one of the or some of the clauses like that, which override, uh, you know, that even if a uh, cloud service provider uh, ha is having an Indian subsidiary and all the availability zones are in India, but it is a U.S. incorporated uh, company. So they right. have a, uh, you know, uh, one window that if the any secret subpoena, which is, uh, you know, given by the uh, U.S. Uh, court of law or U.S. law abiding agencies, then the cloud service provider will hand over the data to the U.S., uh, you know, Uncle Sam without asking any of the client. So uh, that is a one, uh, you know, big clause where a lot of debates are being conducted uh, right. in the uh, boardrooms as well as at a senior management. However, I would still like to add, I think the, uh, so a lot of people use this as a very rhetoric mm -hmm. that nothing should be kept on the public cloud. Uh, right. I think uh, people have to see, uh, you know, uh, with a very, with a pinch of salt that how much uh, of the enterprise data has come under the purview of anti-money laundering or terrorist act and or how many terrorists uh, were the employees of uh, you know large uh, law abiding agencies uh, of uh, people like us uh, you know and who have tried to leverage the enterprise or corporate resources for the uh, you know anti money laundering and uh, unlawful activities and they come under preview if you find from the uh, this public cloud uh, agencies you will find on the enterprise space they are uh, next to zero or negligible cases. And it is right. very, very rarest of rare cases. It has not happened. Like uh, if it, even if it has happened, it is maybe a, in a single finger, you can count those cases in many years actually. So, uh, and there as well, the lot of these public cloud service providers resist giving that data to the uh, government. And uh, however, still there is a, very secret subpoena gag order, which is, uh, you know, nobody uh, can, uh, you know, give like it's a 24 hour gag order that he, they have to respond in 24 hour immediately. Or as soon as the right. order comes in an hour, they have to, uh, and only I think they do, but any such cases are never been raised against the, any of the large enterprises or uh, around the world. So unless maybe, I don't know, jokingly, unless you are a, a large incorporation from North Korea or some kind of a autocratic country. So uh, so I, I think only those may be the exceptions. Oh, very well point, uh, Mr. Bachin. Thank you so much for shifting the gears and, you know, giving a realistic picture about it. Ganeshan, I will also ask the same question to you because you also belong to a specific, you know, uh, an insurance business, which highly regulated again. Uh, and now because of the COVID time, most of the insurance companies are partnering with many e-commerce companies and, you know, many partners, vendors, uh, so that the sale can happen virtually. 
I'm sure you are sharing your data with them. Maybe it's in an encrypted format, but again, you have to share the data so that they can, you know, sell the policies very quickly. What are the challenges that you are facing there when you share the data with them? Are you worried at one point of time? Yes, you know that your data is far from the cloud, but you know, have you taken all the precautions and everything? And how do you also comply with the regulations? Ultimately? Like as uh, as a manufacturer, we work with various partners in terms of, uh, uh, like you know, policy issuance and all. For example. Uh, uh, partners may source it from source it for their customers and uh, right. and and eventually the data comes to us and all. So we ensure that uh, it's it's all done in a, in a very secure way, and uh, and and the data is is owned by the partners. It's, uh, that that's mm-hmm. how the way it is treated, and uh, and for any of our analytical purpose, we don't uh, use that data. So basically, what 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 I'm saying here is. Uh, the data that is uh, coming from the partners will be treated as the as the as the data owned by the partners, and we we would be uh, as a manufacturer we just uh, service this particular uh, partner in terms of issuing the policy and all. Hmm. Uh, taking um, uh, burning the thing as um, as Mr. Basin said, uh, we uh, we have uh, as uh, as far as the data residency which is in India. Uh, we can have the cloud kind of strategy. So I think we are looking at uh, the open uh, uh, systems and all uh, functioning out of cloud in a period of a year or so. So that's, that's the strategy. We are, we are looking at there are some applications which can't be on the cloud that will stay on, on premise. Yeah. Otherwise, we are looking at uh, moving almost everything, uh, uh, the, the kind of open systems on, onto the cloud. And we are looking at the multiple multi-cloud architecture mainly because we feel that uh, the best of the thing can be provided by, by different partners and we should be in a position to interface and the leverage uh, from various, various cloud. Mm-hmm. We are looking at multi-cloud architecture. At the same time, we are looking at the technology in a way where we can uh, take the resources from the cloud and uh, seamlessly attach with the uh, on-premise uh, system. That's the way we are looking at it. Thanks, Ganesh. Venkatesh, uh, uh, you know, my question to you here is in, in is in two parts you know because again you know sometime back i mentioned that you are dealing with a lot of uh, you know vendors players merchants so you know what do you think when the companies are going for multi cloud adoption what are the preparations they have to do uh, that is one part of the question while uh, obviously uh, preparations in terms of shifting to cloud and you know because that is a very very important part and you know again uh, you know is it actually uh, how does it create a business value because ultimately, whether uh, any decision that you take ultimately should turn into the business value. So, is it actually creating a or driving a business growth for you? The first and foremost thing is uh, uh, identify what goes to cloud. Right? Uh, typically, banks has legacy application which even doesn't multi-thread. Uh, there are applications still in uh, banking uh, as well as that. Like need to see which are now cloud ready to go uh, and which is complied by the regulator to uh, uh, go to the cloud. Like what Basin sir said, it has to be data residing in the country. Uh, so uh, for me, it looks like the non-critical applications can directly go. The non-production environment, be it a dev environment or a testing environment, which does not have any uh, production data can go to the cloud. So they have to strategize what goes to the cloud first. Right? Uh, so it's like uh, 60% of uh, the things uh, would be possible to go, while 40% stays back because of regulatory and the legacy reasons. Uh, so even that, now uh, uh, we, we in FIS uh, uh, give a solution like what is called as a bank in a box. Right? So we have created something like a private cloud, uh, very close to what uh, the public cloud operators give. Uh, we have tenanted for each of the banks uh, so that they are operating in a separate box uh, without communicating to each other. The controls uh, uh, by the regulator, the security controls are common across all the financial institutes, right? So which gets shared across these banks, uh, thereby optimizing the cost. So typically when you move to the cloud, uh, the security cost is going to be uh, phenomenally high because uh, of the um, con- uh, uh, process and the controls from uh, encryption, data encryption, network uh, security, all these components comes into play, uh, even more robust when it is in cloud compared to an on-prem solution. So when we give this shared model bank in a box, uh, it optimizes the cost uh, to the users and it comes in an OPEX model anyway. So that uh, this is a, a solution which we're given uh, to uh, mitigate the RBI uh, regulations uh, around cloud. Uh, 
so we have banks already uh, in bank in a box model so for nbfc there is a separate regulation for uh, banks there is a separate regulation uh, so uh, depending on that we create the boxes uh, so that whenever a new bank comes like i told previously time to market right within two weeks time we will be able to bring up a brand new bank uh, on board so the bank will go operational within two weeks from signing the contract okay Uh, uh, so that's how the cloud strategy works. Uh, so uh, though public cloud, yes, uh, it's little uh, a distance far in India uh, from regulation perspective. Uh, but this is a, a mitigation. All that you have in public cloud is available uh, if you build it uh, as a service, uh, uh, bank in a box service in a private cloud. So a lot of service providers are there. SAP also comes up with that model. Uh, so while we put uh, uh, everything infrastructure as a service, database as a service, uh, this is a bank as a service. <laughs> uh, so that's the model right. we are going in. You know, Ritesh, I will take your perspective here. Uh, you know, you heard uh, Mr. Basin and you also heard uh, Mr. Venkateshwaran. You know, there is a small anecdote here. You know, everyone thinks that data can be utilized really well, but again, there is one argument that you know, data is a failure if you. Don't have the data in a, a strategy format, then the artificial intelligence will not work. If you take the same example for the cloud, if you don't know which data to put on cloud and you know which data to keep safe with you, perhaps it will be a failure. So considering these two three anecdotes, what is your view? You know what BFSI companies should specifically do in terms of shifting data to the cloud? What they should do? What they should not do? And what is what has been your experience? The team sir and Venkat sir have already mentioned that. Um, so as I said, I mean, coming back to my first uh, response, uh, in a multi-cloud strategy, Amol, the the important part, firstly, as I said, is the which application can be, you know, ported to the for the public cloud. Is the application yeah. legacy application or it is a multi-service based a cloud native application? Secondly, as I said, up to the total cost of ownership, any customer, it can be a NBFC, a stock exchange, a bank, you know, the TCO modeling has to be done because at the end of the day, it's money, you know, a money uptime. And as Basin sir rightly said, and in fact, I missed out on that point, the compliance plays a very, very important role. And I think uh, sir did elaborate on that. So from our perspective, when, when we speak to a lot of customers, you know, as you rightly said, the data is super critical. We need to know where the data has to be put. Now, when you think about data, again, when we speak to the customers, we first decide and we uh, inform the customers whether the workload or the data is a static workload or it is a dynamic workload. If it is a static workload, it can be definitely be put on the uh, on your in your data center or on prem. Or it's a dynamic workload. I mean, where you require, like uh, Venkat sir said about a virtualized environment, if you need. To you know, just spawn out 10 VMs immediately, or you want to let go of VMs uh, immediately. In that case, the public cloud makes more sense. So, from a workload perspective, it is super critical that you define which are the applications you know you have to put it on public cloud, and which are the applications uh, you have to put on prem. And secondly, if from my perspective, uh, you know the important applications now for for a bank, it may be a core banking application. and that is a super critical application a loan management system a check truncation system these are the super critical applications which can reside on prem this is the criticality of the data this is the compliance this is the data control but you have the secondary applications like you have a hrms you have a web based architecture you have an app layer for a particular tertiary application right those those applications can can definitely be put on the public cloud but at the same time you know my my personal emphasis would be whether you put an application on prem or whether you put it on, on on the public cloud there is something called as a control plane the control plane should be one because you know evidently it should not happen that you know the if the control planes are different that it starts you know bringing more compl- complexity in your data center with respect to how you manage your on prem applications or how you manage your the public cloud so the control plane has to be same Thanks, Ritesh. Mr. Basin, do you want to add something to what uh, Ritesh said on this control thing? And also, you know, if you could add, or oh, you already mentioned about the public cloud, the difference between the private cloud and the hybrid model. But you know, going ahead when you are adopting multi-cloud strategy, you know, how do you see the difference in your operations, business operations? You know, why and the benefit of multi-cloud strategy? What is the major change that 
Okay. One uh, major change, uh, what we are observing, like, uh, you know, we are uh, like development environments. Uh, we have started, uh, you know, putting on the uh, public cloud, especially in this uh, COVID scenario and post COVID scenario also, as we are looking the large percentage of uh, staff will continue to work from, uh, you know, remote because one that coming back to work uh, will also be uh, started uh, gradually. But, uh, uh, you know, apart from that, we are looking at a strategy where uh, the large number of people will continue to work from remote, uh, you know, even if the situation normalizes. Uh, right. And given that, uh, you know, uh, it will be a very good uh, strategy for some of the uh, tools, uh, uh, you know, which are uh, cloud enabled tool, be those are collaboration tools or be those are the IT for IT tools. They all are, uh, or the, uh, you know, uh, security tools, like a lot of uh, our security tools are cloud based because when the, you know, uh, all the attacks are getting, attack vectors are getting originated from the uh, internet. Why don't we deploy uh, our uh, security technology right in the middle of internet only? So, hmm. so that we can prevent them reaching to our borders or uh, reaching to our perimeter level itself. So hmm. uh, they, we can stop them before reaching our perimeter. Th uh, another third major area we are looking at is since now the digital uh, uh, is becoming a, a greater emphasis uh, because of again COVID scenario, we have taken a very large uh, transformation program uh, where we are now moving our legacy applications to the modern application architectures, okay. uh, which is a cloud native architecture. And uh, even if they are the critical applications, like as I was mentioning, based on the business process criticality, day one, they may uh, be getting deployed uh, on-prem. But if as the, you know, uh, the cycle of uh, innovation is uh, shrinking, so, uh, like you would, as you yourself are saying that, you know, cloud utilization uh, will be growing exponentially or 100% uh, in the next uh, one year or so. Uh, that is a prediction and more and more cloud data centers are going to come in into the uh, country because the base will be growing. Uh, the user base, customer base will be growing. So, uh, you know, there will be a, a lot of, uh, you know, familiarity with this technology, a lot of faith in this technology, trust in that factor would be coming in this technology in terms of data residency and security and the uh, local uh, data, uh, you know, uh, protection law uh, will also be getting stronger because I think that is one law which is, I think India is also working as the data residency uh, rules and regulations will, uh, you know, come in. And uh, most of these cloud service providers are compliant, like especially look at the these cloud service providers are having their uh, data center compliant to all the European laws. Uh, and they have better data protection laws than the India currently. And India is already right. working. Once the data protection law in India uh, becomes uh, live, basically, and all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, cloud service providers have to abide by those. So then naturally the, it will, uh, you know, exponentially it will be growing. So we are making the things ready so that when uh, uh, even our core right. applications, we will be eventually be able to take them to the cloud. So uh, in our modernization programs, we are building our applications cloud native uh, and uh, uh, cloud scalable auto scale uh, services to be uh, provided on demand. Uh, and uh, it has to be intelligent based on the AI analytics data, which is more predictively, uh, you know, uh, it knows that every Thursday at this point of time, the peak load appears on the trading network. So why can't I, uh, you know, in an advanced scale up the services, uh, you know, uh, I had uh, so that uh, the load, uh, peak loads uh, are not kind of a, uh, you know, handling becomes a major problem. So all those things will be a reality and we are adapting to these uh, technologies of the uh, auto scaling and the container driven architectures and microservices uh, to make the applications future ready, uh, which is going to be largely the cloud. Very valid point, uh, Mr. Basin. Uh, Ritesh, I will quickly, you know, bring you here and if you could give a joint comment, you know, here because Mr. Basin said, yes, we are trying, we are getting ready, you know, for the new laws and 
we exactly don't know what will be there in the law but obviously europe has formed gdpr and it's a very stringent law uh, india will also have that law so considering these things is it tough for you you know uh, to be future ready right now or how are you adopting your strategy i'll just put certain uh, uh, points about uh, nutanix as as are uh, the software uh, product and the features so we already have the enterprise cloud operating system uh, amol uh, which will essentially break into three aspects uh, one is the data center services the another is the devops services and third is the services now last 10 years when when nutanix has come uh, uh, into being our data center services is already giving the benefits on prem to all the customers which includes you know the hyper convergence of your compute your storage your networking and virtualization also i believe uh, ganeshan sir did mention about the open architecture so we don't bind the customers to particular hardware so we are hardware uh, uh, agnostic we are hypervisor agnostic so coming from a data center service which was a specifically on uh, amol which was act 1 i can call it you know basis the customer readiness for the cloud now what we have gone towards is act 2 and when i say act 2 which is a devops services so principally we are ready you know to provide a cloud native or a, a, a some some we can call it an application life cycle management solution wherein from a single console and this points to the fact that i mentioned about a single control plane so a kind of an application right. management wherein in case a customer is running a legacy application he can do an auto deployment of that application on prem or the customer is transforming to a microservices based architecture he can definitely have the application you know automatically orchestrated or deployed on the public cloud i'll give an example of a bank so we are working uh, with one of the bank in india where the customer has decided to go with the kubernetes platform what they are doing is as basin sir also rightly said the test and dev platform we have now nutanix on one of the public cloud vendor which is readily available now so the test and dev landscape we are putting on the public cloud but for the critical application we are putting a kubernetes based platform on prem so again it it does link somewhere to the compliance perspective also because the customer yeah. has the critical workloads on on prem the third part as i said is the desktop service we have a vdi service and as sir basin sir rightly said i mean we give the freedom to you you may put vdi on prem or you may want to roll out immediately your vdi from a public cloud now the public cloud can be azure aws or gcp whichever the uh, you know the customer chooses so essentially Uh, base is the customer readiness amol we have our solution ready we want a on prem solution we are there for you you want a public cloud solution we can provision the vms or the workloads automatically on public cloud or you want a kind of a true hybrid solution where you want the movement of workloads you know from one place to another and bring it back that is possible but the, again as i said the 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 usp of the solution is a single control plane it's like an you know iphone if you are having an iphone and you want to store your photograph you can store on the iphone or you can store on the icloud but the interface is same and that's what as new times we give it to the customers that you can store your data on prem or you can store your data you know on the public cloud but from the same console uh thanks sir tesh for that note and uh, in fact time is running out but i will take quick reaction from venkateshwar and ganeshan quickly on this how do you see the future of multi cloud strategy going ahead venkateshwar so uh, multi cloud uh, for banking is the future from my perspective because uh, as i said earlier there are going to be legacy uh, applications be it for banking right. or whatever so to it's going to take a while to uh, convert them to be a cloud uh, uh, compatible uh, applications so for that reason the on prem is going to uh, continue and uh, regulator is going to take time to uh, allow uh, data to be uh, uh, put in the public cloud so for that reason the private cloud is going to continue and as uh, besinder said the development the testing and the non prod environments can go into the public cloud so you need to uh, mix and match uh, depending on your uh, business needs and the regulator needs uh, Uh, so to add that like what uh, uh, ritesh has said uh, you need that control plane right uh, so having all this uh, uh, you have to manage the environment uh, so all this is going to be different technologies uh, so you cannot have different administrators for each of this domain so the control plane is going to be very vital in managing the uh, multi cloud uh, environment so this is going to be the future for uh, 
couple of more years and uh, we have to live with it until we get a full fledged uh, public cloud uh, uh, banking professor anand ganesh your last comments yeah, so i think um, um, it took many number of years or maybe decades for uh, the insurance industry to to like you know uh, adopt to the cloud kind of thing earlier but uh, we are we are seeing a huge traction in the past 2 3 years in terms of moving our applications to the cloud and uh, now we are seeing as indicated that uh, the best of things can come from multi multiple partners multi cloud kind of thing so uh, I, so we are now moving into a situation where from a vpc setup in, in one particular cloud cloud partner we will extend it to the multi cloud kind of thing i agree with almost all the panel i think uh, this is going to be the uh, new normal and that's that's the that's, that is when we will be able to leverage the best out of uh, thank you so much gentlemen thank you so much mr basin mr ganesh and mr venkateshwaran and mr gupta for sharing remarkable thoughts and thank you so much dear participants for sticking to us and uh, you know being with us uh, stay tuned to etcio.com and thank you so much once again for joining to this panel discussion on maximizing multi cloud for driving business and growth thank you so much Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bol. Thank you, Ganesh, Ganesh, and Venkatesh.